Welcome to Almost Here, Round the Corner of Future Technology Podcasts with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies poised to transform our lives for better or worse are the focus of this podcast. Almost Here means these technologies are now here and starting to be used. We're just around the corner, from Bitcoin to artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more. Coming to Dallas, Texas, September 14th, 15th, and 16th, 2018, the Blockchain and Future Tech Expo. This is going to be a gigantic conference of over 5,000 people. We're going to be talking about blockchain and its applications. We're going to be talking about quantum computing, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, and several other future technologies that are poised to and actually changing our lives as we speak. Here's why you should attend. As you may know, early adopters are the ones that investigated and profited from things like the gold rush in the 1800s, from the dot-com boom in the 1990s, from the internet boom in 2005, from the smartphone explosion in 2007, from the real estate boom that ended in 2008, and of course, from the Bitcoin boom that started in 2012. Early adopters act now. They don't wait till later. They go out west first in their covered wagons. They find the biggest gold nuggets. If you consider yourself an early adopter and you want to find the biggest nuggets, then you owe it to yourself to attend this upcoming conference. Blockchain is going to affect how we control and store our medical data, how we send money around the world, how we bank, and more. But artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and cybersecurity will play a pivotal role in our lives as well. And that's why our next event, September 14th to the 16th at the Dallas Convention Center, is going to have not only 5,000 plus attendees, but we'll showcase blockchain, AI, cybersecurity, quantum computing, and more. You want to get in on the coming gold rush of future tech and opportunity as an early adopter. Don't be left out. To register, go to bftexpo.com. That's blockchainfuturetechexpo.com. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to the Future Tech Podcast. I'm Alan Thomas, and I'm joined today by Axel Schumacher co-founder and CEO of Human Genome Analytics. How are you doing, Axel? Oh, great. How are you? Oh, I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. Let's, Fantastic. Uh, let's just jump right in. What is your company? What, is, what do you guys do? Oh, this is an excellent question. So Shivom <laughs> is um, something completely new. We are um, a blockchain and precision medicine company. So what we are doing is we bring different uh, novel technologies together to build something complete. So I have to go a little bit back here. So first of all, what is precision medicine? Precision medicine is basically when uh, doctors or pharmaceutical companies um, trying to find cures or drugs or kind of therapies for specific for people. So not for everyone, but for every single individual one by one, like because we are all different, right? And our um, difference or how we uh, basically react to drugs or how, how we react to the environment depends a lot of, on our genome. So that makes us really different. And we have to find ways how we can develop drugs and therapies for people depending on their genomes as a consequence. And this is where we want to help. We're doing this by uh, getting people's genome on our platform, the genome sequence, DNA sequence, or get them, if they don't have that, get them, uh, get those people sequenced, either with our facility or with uh, our service partner. So basically, um, if we have a user, we can store the genomic data in a highly uh, uh, secure way, so the data is really safe on the platform. And this data can then be used to access all kinds of services, everything basically that you can imagine the healthcare uh, industry that interacts with this genome sequence. For example, I, I try to illustrate this a little bit. Um, let's say um, you have a family history of diabetes, right? Then this is maybe some information on this is in your genome data. This you could find in a report that could then tell you, hey, look, uh, you have some genes that uh, predisposes you to diabetes and you should change your lifestyle. 
uh, these are things that we are basically uh, are developing. So the whole thing you have to imagine is uh, it's a combination of genomics, of blockchain technology, and of artificial intelligence, among other cool technologies. So um, basically, once the data is on the platform, what, what we want to do is then run uh, these algorithms, for example, AI algorithms over the data to make it meaning, meaningful for people so that they can change their lifestyle, that they can uh, get better advice from a doctor or from a counselor how to manage their health. So this is basically the Shibom platform. And so what brought you to co-founding this company? Were you already in the health space or the tech space or or how, how did you get to both. founding? <laughs> Actually, both. So I'm a geneticist myself, and um, I worked for a long time, like, like almost, almost 25 years in the field, in the healthcare field. So I started out with being a, a classical academic researcher. So I had also my own research group, and we were um, studying complex diseases such as diabetes, Alzheimer's, uh, different cancers, or uh, other age-related. And um, I moved then into a field called epigenetics, how our genes are regulated on a molecular level. So how they are switched on and off and how it, this may lead also to diseases if something goes wrong. And uh, after a few years, I moved then into the industry and I tried to apply my expertise there to find new cures and new methods how we can uh, move the genomics field forward to support drug research. So I went also into the what we call the bio-IT space, uh, producing precision medicine and genomics platforms for the pharmaceutical industry. And from this slowly, so the idea, idea emerged that we need something completely new because uh, at that time, so a few years ago, it was uh, the whole field of bioinformatics. It, it, it ran into problems. So we had a lot of bottlenecks and the researchers, they, for example, could not access very easily genomic data from patients from all around the world for their data protection rules that interfere here. Um, other privacy issues, you have to get consent to get access to data. You cannot just transfer it across borders. So it's not very easy. So we needed a new way of doing this. And their blockchain came into um, the whole picture. And I started to get interested in, in it. Uh, I thought, okay, this could probably help a lot. We can use it as a tool to improve the whole ecosystem and the healthcare ecosystem. Um, it, Probably around a year ago, I also started then uh, to join the Blockchain Research Institute in Toronto as a, an, a member of the faculty to study more the ways how healthcare can be really revolutionized using blockchain technology. And so I, I accumulated a lot of knowledge, I hope. <laughs> I wrote a book about it. It was called the Blockchain and Healthcare Strategy Guide. This was targeted at the pharmaceutical industry, at government, insurers, and uh, also patients. And it was a huge success. So I was really surprised at that time. And over time, so I, I met then also my co-founders and the, the idea slowly built that we should really uh, build a platform around it, build a company to revolutionize healthcare and precision medicine. And th there we are. And so I, I, and I know you said when you were describing it, that it involves blockchain and AI and precision medicine. I, I think I get how the blockchain, so I get how the blockchain is involved, but where exactly does the artificial intelligence come in? Uh, that's that's a really the interesting part. I mean, we are we are still not fully at that level, but we are working together with uh, AI, AI specialists, or so really some of the foremost experts in the field worldwide. And what we want to do is basically to crunch all the data that we have on our platform, and this will be in the future hopefully not only genomic data, but also other so-called omics data, like. Uh, metabolomic data, this is all the small molecules that run through your bloodstream, or uh, transcriptomic data, uh, lipidomic data, uh, also f data from your healthcare records and uh, lifestyle data that you may uh, measure with wearables, like Fitbit or other devices. And now imagine a, a normal doctor, if, something, if, if you're sick, of course, the doctor can look at this data, but uh, he or she, they, they cannot make much out of it. 
what we what we really need to bring all of this data together and make it uh, meaningful and actionable uh, is are these AI algorithms that can really crunch all this big data and find patterns. In it. Because we, we humans, we cannot do this. We are just, uh, we, we cannot look at this, all of these kinds of data. Even normal uh, algorithms that are classically used in bioinformatic applications, they really, they fail to put in all of this and integrate all of this data together. So we really have to move to the next level of mathematics, of, uh, of AI research to make this data really useful. And so what would you say is the, the ultimate mission statement for the company then? Well, we really want to revolutionize healthcare. And by doing this, we provide a platform where people can manage their health. This will make healthcare not only for the patient itself, but for the whole ecosystem, for the health, whole healthcare ecosystem, much cheaper. Because we can uh, introduce a direct interaction between service providers and patients. Uh, we are doing this by uh, basically putting on top of our blockchain technology a healthcare marketplace. So users of the platform will be able to uh, access other healthcare services from third party providers. Um, for example, you as a user, you could get um, maybe in a health insurance or you could participate in a clinical trial. So a pharmaceutical camp company may be interested in your data. They could pay you for participating then in this clinical trial. This would all basically be uh, coordinated on the platform. There you could be incentivized by different kinds of ways to participate in, re in research projects. And by doing this, we empower patients really to manage their health, their healthcare data, and at the same time, if they want to, to uh, support research projects. This is basically where we want to go. So let's talk about the user experience for a second. When, when first starting out, what is that, what is that like? Day one of, of getting on the platform and getting set up and, and what does that take? Hmm. All right. I mean, we are not yet there. So, but, um, I think that the first, what, what we describe as the center of gravity in our <clears throat> precision medicine ecosystem is really the genome database. So for you as a user, it is, of course, important to get your genome sequence into the database. A lot of people around at, at the moment, around 12 million people worldwide have already their genome sequenced. They would be able to, if they have access to their data, just take this data and upload it to our platform, right? Um, of course, long term, most of the people that will come to our platform, if they are patients in the hospital or if you're just a, a healthy individual and you just want to manage your health, you want to stay healthy. Uh, you could get sequenced with us. And there we have to uh, distinguish between uh, what most other direct-to-consumer gen genetics companies do. This is, they do exome sequencing primarily, but the field is now moving into what we call the whole genome sequence. We want to really sequence the, your whole 3 billion uh, uh, base pairs in, in, in your cells and use this data then to uh, help you managing your health Right. And so basically you would get, um, if, if you don't have your own genome sequence, we would send you a saliva collection kit, send us basically a little bit of saliva back. We would get your genome sequenced. Uh, the data would be stored very securely in an encrypted form on our platform. And uh, only you as the user are able to access it or to grant access to and there's where the blockchain part comes in. So we can add what is called a smart contract. Smart contracts basically tell who has access to the data and who should not get access. Again, I give you a practical example. Uh, you, of course, want to stay healthy. Let's say you uh, are hospitalized. Uh, then, of course, it makes sense that the hospital may get access to your health record and your genomic data so that they can uh, use this information to tailor uh, the therapy specifically for you. Because there are a lot of drugs that, depending on your genome, will work and others will not work, and you don't want to get those drugs, right? So this would be uh, basically then in the smart contract. So please give me, uh, please give access to a hospital in case I'm getting sick and I'm in the hospital. 
But at the same time, you don't want to have your health insurance getting access to your data. So you can specify this then uh, again. Say, look, please, I, I want to give away my um, data for research, but not for my health insurance. Or I don't want that my government gets access to my DNA sequence. This all can be potentially be written in such a smart contract. And this gives really the power back to the data owner. And this is very important for you as the user of the platform. You are the owner of your own. We at Chivo, we have no access to uh, DNA sequence. So we cannot analyze it on our own. And we cannot give it away to someone else. Right. And this is very, very, very important that you are empowered and only you decide what happens with your data. So you as the user would have total control, total direct control over who gets access to that health data and who doesn't. Exactly. And then you could also say, look, I'm, I'm not interested in supporting research. This would be also fine. And then nobody else would get access and you would be the only person basically using the platform. Uh, getting your genome analyzed uh, and, and accessing all kinds of healthcare related services on the platform. And so uh, as you guys have gone along the way in, in building this, building this project together, putting this together, what are some of the challenges you've encountered along the way so far? Uh, this is primarily, I would say, in, in the head of the people, <laughs> except accepting new technology. The healthcare field is very, very conservative environment, especially doctors. And they like to um, do what they did for hundreds of years, right? But time is changing. We have now a completely new world with new technologies. And we have to use this uh, technology to improve our health, to stay healthy. And a lot of healthcare ecosystems, they're very slow in adapting these new technologies. So, for example, there, I was recently at a meeting at the um, European Union uh, Parliament uh, where we discussed with uh, stakeholders if and how, how we can do it that genetic tests are reimbursed by insurance because most of those tests are not reimbursed you have as a as a user it doesn't matter in which country you live it, like here in europe or where you are in the us uh, most of those tests you have to pay yourself as a patient and in the long term of course this should change because having your genome data available can really significantly lower costs for the healthcare system Right. So we have to go into that area. And there, of course, there are roadblocks. That means we have to educate the whole healthcare ecosystem. This is something like why I'm here and doing a podcast. People have to understand the benefits of such platforms and using your genome and your healthcare data in a really novel ways to manage healthcare. And because it's great, this is the future. So would you say that basically it'll take doctors and patients and health officials who are early adopters to kind of get this to really pick up steam, to really get traction? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think a big part will be the community of early adopters that can try out those services. And then, of course, the word will spread. And uh, on the other hand, we, we started already several collaborations with hospitals, with governments. We have one project in India and the Indian state of Andhra Pradesh. This is a, this is a very forward-looking government. They want to um, do something for their population, and they're also very interested in blockchain technology. And so we will have one project that will start later this year with them together. Uh, we are talking to already to other uh, countries, also to other governments, because uh, they, of course, uh, they can decide a lot from basically top to bottom um, to initiate, initiate projects much easier. Uh, but it will take time. There's no question about it. And I, I assume, uh, again, there's, there's certain areas in the world where, where this will happen much quicker. And in other more conservative uh, countries, it will take quite some time. But in the U.S., I think you are people, they understand uh, uh, really the, these applications, how useful it can be. And so what would you say that so far have been 
some of the big wins that you've had or, or any big achievements you've had along the way at this point? Well, first, of course, we, I mean, we are a startup and uh, as such, it, we need to get a little bit uh, traction in the in, in the whole healthcare community and also in the blockchain community. And I think we were quite successful doing this. Um, we are already, for that, that we are really completely new company, a lot of people know already about us. Uh, we had a fundraising already, which was quite successful. So we we, we collected around the $35 million to, uh, that, that we can use now for growing the company, for building the product and uh, building this whole ecosystem, right? And what was especially for, for me very uh, good to see is that it doesn't matter with, with whom we talk to in the industry or with the government. We got all this a fantastic feedback. So companies, uh, all kinds of uh, health organizations and the government, of course, they're very interested in working with us. So we are very optimistic and look really uh, hopeful into the future that we can really build something meaningful here and that we can really revolutionize healthcare at least a little bit and help people staying healthy managing their own health, empower people. And this is something very, very, very important for us. And so as as, as you're building the company and, and, and building this service up, I'm sure you have a lot of ideas that kind of get thrown around. Are there any oh, yeah. developments or ideas that kind of come, come across your desk where you say, well, that's a good idea, but it might be a little too much to try to do today or even this year. Maybe it's something <laughs> that could be done three years from now or something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, first of all, there there are things that are just very difficult. Like the healthcare ecosystem is, for example, very, very complicated when it comes to regulations and uh, uh, there's so many different kinds of data and uh, so many different interoperability problems. Like where you have to move data from one point to another. Like getting um, electronic medical records from hospitals. This is actually quite complicated. And in the moment, we would not try to develop this on our own. But this is the cool thing. We are, we are not working in isolation. We're working with partner companies. And we are inviting other companies to join us. And all the expertise we do not have in-house that can, can, of course, come from somewhere else. Again, I will give an example. We, we partnered already with uh, other companies. Uh, one is uh, GTG Labs from Australia that provided diagnostics, so genomic diagnostic. And another one is uh, Simply Vital Health, a company that has uh, also comes from the blockchain and healthcare space, and they have a better expertise in other areas where we don't have the expertise. So we can combine our uh, knowledge and build something new, some really great ecosystem. The same is, uh, of course, when we go, when we look a little bit further ahead, there will be some cool things coming for sure. And we we will work on this as well. One thing is that would be like really a live tracking of health data. Imagine you have a wearable. Um, I mean, the, these devices, they, they're getting really smarter and smarter. They can send all kinds of information to our platform in the general, right? And this data could then be um, really, this data could be crunched by the aforementioned deep learning algorithm and could then give you live feedback, it could go back onto your smartphone or to your wearable or even to, in theory, to some small nanorobots going through your body. Now, there are so many different things. And that basically life could uh, adjust your uh, your health. Yeah. And, uh, and this is what will for sure come in the future. This may be, uh, still take three, five, ten years, I don't know, but it will come. And so what does the roadmap look like for Siobhan, the, the, next, the next 12 to 24 months? What, what does it look like? What can we expect to see? Yeah, well, first, of course, we have now to uh, get the, the product ready so that we can put it live. Uh, this will still take some time. Um, as, as I mentioned, we are a very early stage uh, startup. Uh, but once that is done, uh, we'll collect with several pilot project data. So I mentioned before, we, have, we are working with hospitals and we have projects then uh, at several places around the world. Uh, 
we will for sure have sponsoring projects. So we are very interested in uh, rare diseases that have usually uh, a genomic component. So it, it's very interesting to uh, sequence those individuals. So we will provide uh, for a certain number of people free sequencing. And uh, so there will be several cool projects coming up. Then, of course, we, what we want to do is we will step-by-step step add services to the platform. So next year, we hope that we can then add, uh, again, I mentioned already, things like um, metabolomic uh, measurements um, or to uh, some other new cool stuff. This is getting very popular. This is uh, studying your microbiome. This is so data, basically, what, what happens in, in your gut, really, what are all the bacteria how they interact with your body. Now, this is something that can be measured and where we can get information that really affects your health. So step by step, we will add services to the platform. And a lot of those services we will, of course, not develop in-house, but they will come from other companies that can come, uh, use our API, so um, basically ways of interacting with our blockchain platform, and then they can add their services to our platform for our users. So I think this will be really cool what will come up there. So we have already, we are talking already to, to different companies and of course we will intensify this. And again, we are just at the very beginning, but I think the future will be very, very, very interesting. And so in terms of any big takeaways that our listeners need to focus on and in, in thinking about Shivom and, and human genome analytics, uh, what, what would you say are the big takeaways there? Yeah, first of all, uh, follow us, go to shivom.io and uh, just have a look around. And if you have questions, just ask us. We will, uh, we will try everything to answer your questions in, the, uh, in our social media channels. Because gen genomics is difficult to understand. We have to understand this. That's the reason what we also want to implement in time is to have a network of genetic counselors that help people on the platform to really understand what all of this really means and even help their doctors understand because even doctors, uh, they cannot keep up with all this, this new data because it's just too much and it's understandable. It's complicated. So just come to our site, check it out. And um, if you have already DNA uh, sequence uh, available, uh, once our platform is live, you can really upload it and just experiment a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Genomics will be, for sure, in the next years, a standard um, part of managing healthcare. So it will come. And the earlier people get really interested in it and educate themselves, the better. And I think um, there's not, not so much yet on our platform. In time, we will also add um, educational material on it. So then... Uh, because this is, we really want to educate the whole community worldwide. What really is genetics, how you can use it to manage your health, how to stay healthy by using this, all this data. So this is something people should really take home, this message. Educate yourself. Um, if you are interested, you can, let's say you have a rare disease, a rare genetic disease, contact us. Maybe we can do together a research project. We can uh, together participate in a research project. There are a lot of exciting things uh, in the future. So, and everyone, basically, every human being on the planet can potentially be part of this exciting journey in the future. Okay, and, and let's just give everyone the website one more time and kind of spell it out because I want to make sure they, they get the spelling of it right. <laughs> yes, this is shivom.io. So, S H i v o m dot i o great great and uh axel i just want to thank you for coming on today and just sharing your expertise and your time with us thank you <laughs> thank you so much for having me on your show coming to dallas texas september 14th 15th and 16th 2018 the blockchain and future check expo this is going to be a gigantic conference of over 5,000 people we're going to be talking about blockchain and its applications. We're going to be talking about quantum computing, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, and several other future technologies that are poised to and actually changing our lives as we speak. Here's why you should attend. 
As you may know, early adopters are the ones that investigated and profited from things like the gold rush in the 1800s, from the dot-com boom in the 1990s, from the internet boom in 2005, from the smartphone explosion in 2007, from the real estate boom that ended in 2008, and of course, from the Bitcoin boom that started in 2012. Early adopters act now. They don't wait till later. They go out west first in their covered wagons. They find the biggest gold nuggets. If you consider yourself an early adopter and you want to find the biggest nuggets, then you owe it to yourself to attend this upcoming conference. Blockchain is going to affect how we control and store our medical data, how we send money around the world, how we bank, and more. But artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and cybersecurity will play a pivotal role in our lives as well. And that's why our next event, September 14th to the 16th at the Dallas Convention Center, is going to have not only 5,000 plus attendees, but will showcase blockchain, AI, cybersecurity, quantum computing, and more. You want to get in on the coming gold rush of future tech and opportunity as an early adopter. Don't be left out. To register, go to bftexpo.com. That's blockchainfuturetechexpo.com. Thank you. You have been listening to Almost Here, Around the Corner Future Technology Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Subscribe to this podcast, post a review, to discover more future technologies that are poised to transform our lives for better or worse, such as Bitcoin, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more.